and carried compression pump for household spraying. This machine is used for residual spraying of insecticide and facilitates uniform dispersion and penetration of the pesticide on surfaces. Before using this equipment, it is important to be familiar with its parts, many of which we will be handling, employing safety measures as we do so. Belt, Holes, filter, pump, pressure gauge, pressure release valve, cover, tank, rod, footrest, nozzle, nozzle body, nozzle filter, and nozzle cover. Operating the equipment. Remember to prepare the insecticide according to the manufacturer's instruction. Insecticide in a wettable powder formulation should be mixed in a separate container and then poured into the spraying pump. Other insecticide formulations such as small water-soluble bags, tablets, granulated insecticides, concentrated suspensions, and micro-encapsulates are added directly to the tank full of water. These formulations mix easily with water and reduce the risk associated with handling the insecticides. Once the spray pump has been filled to the maximum level indicated in the tank, the tank is covered and the spray is pumped until the pressure gauge indicates 55 pounds per square inch or 3.8 bars. Each stroke produces 1 pound per square inch, so 55 strokes are needed to reach the indicated pressure. Before beginning household spraying, the contents of the sprayer should be thoroughly mixed by shaking the tank. Measures to take before starting to spray. Before beginning application of the insecticide, inform the occupants of the dwelling about the purpose and time of the spray. Inform the occupants about poison prevention measures, cover food, kitchen utensils, water containers, and toys. The occupants and their pets should leave the dwelling. Do not spray dwellings where there are sick people. It is important to check the equipment to make sure that all the parts are assembled correctly and are functioning properly. Use of the equipment during residual spray. It is very important to follow instructions regarding spraying technique and to observe the prescribed distances so that the insecticide adequately penetrates surfaces. The spraying is done in vertical bands 75 cm wide and the bands should overlap by 5 cm. Spray from ceiling to floor with a downward movement until one band is complete. Take a step to the side and spray upward from the floor to the ceiling to ensure that bands are the correct width. Keep the end of the rod 45 cm from the wall. Continue the procedure moving clockwise until you finish spraying the room. The spraying speed should be such that it takes 4.5 seconds for every 2 vertical meters of wall. For timing, it helps to mentally count 1001, 1002, 1003 for each band. Calibrating the equipment. Before using the insecticide, use clean water to verify that the equipment works properly and does not drip. A pump sprayer in poor condition will not produce adequate spraying or apply the proper dose of insecticide. The nozzle, you should check whether you are using the right kind of nozzle. Make sure it is not damaged. Make sure the nozzle produces a horizontal fan of spray with an 80 degree discharge angle and an output of 0.76 liters per minute at 40 pounds per square inch. Check that the manual valve filter is clean. Pour clean water into the tank. Never fill it to more than three quarters of its capacity. You will find a mark inside the tank indicating maximum fill level. 
Use both hands to operate the pump and with one foot on the footrest, pump until you have 55 PSI or 3.8 bars of pressure. Each complete stroke produces approximately 1 PSI. Check that the tank is being pressurized. Listen for any whistling sound indicating escaping air. Check that the pressure gauge does not show an increase in pressure when you pump. Check until you are certain that there is no dripping anywhere in the rod or hose, especially where the hose connects to the tank and to the pressure relief valve. Operate the pressure release valve and make sure that the spray is coming out through the nozzle. Check the band that the nozzle produces by spraying a dry part of the wall. Check that the band is uniform and has no streaks. Make sure that the nozzle does not drip when the pressure release valve is released. Calibrate the nozzle with water in the tank. Pump it up to 55 PSI or 3.8 bars. Activate the pressure relief valve for one minute and collect the discharge. Then measure the amount of insecticide obtained using a graduated container. Empty the container, discharge for another minute and measure the quantity. Repeat a third time. Calculate the average of the three measurements. The average discharge of an 8002 nozzle is 760 millimeters per minute. If the discharge is incorrect, check the nozzle and the protective filter to make sure they are not obstructed. If necessary, replace the nozzle and repeat the calibration. The addition of a flow and pressure regulated valve will ensure that the range of flow does not drop with the tank pressure. The opening in the nozzle is very small and there should not be any damage to it. A clogged nozzle should be put in a container with water for several hours before the obstruction is removed using a very soft toothbrush. Never clean the nozzle using pins or wires. You should not put the nozzle in your mouth to blow through it. Remember, it has been in contact with insecticide. Once you have checked the spray pump, you should depressurize it by rotating the handle of the cover until it hits the relief valve button. During this process, you should grab the handle to make sure the cover does not fall into the tank. Empty the clean water that you use to test the spray pump. Maintaining the equipment. Fill the tank with clean water to the halfway point. Put the cover on and shake the tank to wash the inner surfaces. Then pump the pressure up to 43 PSI and proceed to spray a wall until the water is finished. Unscrew the release valve, check and clean the filter, and lastly, screw the valve back on. Remove the cover from the nozzle and wash it. The nozzle is essential to the proper application of insecticide, so take special care with this component. With the cover open, open the valve and let the water drain out of the hose and rod. Clean the outside of the tank. Make sure that the rod is placed correctly to protect the nozzle. In the leather piston cup, Periodically place some drops of oil, not heavier than SAE 30, and rub it on the leather until the leather softens. When storing the pump for long periods of time, hang it with the mouth pointed down, with the cover open to allow air to circulate. Leave the rod hanging from the metallic ring of the tank, keeping the pressure relief device open. <laughs>